we're going to learn the basics of coroutines for Kotlin Android. Now what is coroutines? Coroutines is in a different way to do asynchronous tasks within Kotlin. Now coroutines is there's um, my coroutines is in other programming languages, but specifically in Kotlin right now, um, coroutines um, is a background thread pretty much to create asynchronous tasks in a different way. Um, and, I, and I'm going to show you the basics of that, how it applies to Android and how it can benefit you as a Android developer. The first thing, go to github.com slash Colin slash Anko and then go to the wiki. And then coroutines. And then just copy this um, compile right here. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Just add that in there with your Anko version. Uh, the Anko version right now is 0 0.10.2. So just put the, the Anko uh, coroutines in there and it should work. Uh, you also have to add on the bottom of your, or, or on my web, Wherever inside your Gradle, put in Kotlin Experimental and then add in Coroutines Enabled. Coroutines is experimental, so that means it's not fully released yet. So it's just, this is just a warning that not everything is going to work exactly how it's supposed to. I find it's, it's pretty reliable, but uh, uh, I would not use Coroutines in a very big project or something like that, like, like Instagram or something. I wouldn't use that because it's still experimental. Uh, you know, there's there's still stuff, you know, that's wrong with it, even though I haven't encountered um, anything with that. I'm sure a big application like Instagram or like Facebook would probably find something in there. Now, why coroutines? I'll show you. So, in a regular Android application for with Colin, we would create a async. And we would just get, uh, you know, a background task. We would get, uh, you know, get text from network. This is my very lazy way of doing doing a, um, a, asynchronous tasks without really uh, implementing anything right now. Also get text from network. That gets the text somewhere from the web. And then we're going to update our UI if this, uh, there we go. And we update our UI. And we, to do that, we need to put it on the UI thread. Okay. Now, this serves a problem because there are times where you have to do an asynchronous task and then do a UI thread. Asynchronous task and do another UI thread. You're going to have all of these UI threads all cluttered around this whole thing. And it's going to be very messy. For one, uh, that's one way of of a reason why it it benefits you, and also uh, you know it gets very messy, and also you're you're going back and forth from the background thread to a UI thread. It just doesn't look good, especially when you're returning things, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much the messy part for that part. Uh, so how do we solve that part for coroutines? We pretty much do the same thing, async, but we, instead of a curly brace, we put in the parentheses and we put in UI. Now, we need to enable that, and that's from the experimental. Colin X, Coroutines, exper experimental, remember to use that one. I get rid of that, that async task in our, what we imported, and put in the experimental one instead. Now with this async task, we aren't in the background thread yet. We're actually in the UI thread, hence the, the UI. We're in the UI thread right now when we're in the curly braces, and that's a good thing. Um, I found that most of the time when doing background threads, you know, um, like 40% of the time, I'm doing asynchronous tasks. 60% of the time, I'm calling methods to update the UI. And that's mainly because I do async tasks in an interactor 
So I'm actually grabbing things from the, from the, um, uh, the database and grabbing things from maybe the, the network or something, and then I'm returning it, and then I'm calling you know something to update the UI multiple times. So if you do that, you're going to have a whole bunch of UI threads. Why not just put in a couple async threads? Uh, so same thing, we have a text. And then we have the update UI. Wait, the, not the update UI, get text from network. Now we have the update UI. Now, this isn't in the background thread. Like I said, this is in the UI thread right now. To put in the background, we need to do BG. Very easy, just two letters. Put that right in there. And we have, a, we have it on the background. Now, text actually hasn't been run yet when it gets to this line. Text is actually, um, if you do control and, okay, if you hover over it, it's a deferred string. What deferred means is that this is a, is, this is a pointer to an asynchronous task. We haven't run this asynchronous task yet. This is just a pointer to the job. So this is like a pointer to this function yet. It hasn't run yet or anything, it's just a pointer. To run it, we do await. So that await. This is the beauty of it, mainly because it works so well with updating the UIs, because you can have a whole bunch of BGs and not have them run simultaneously. You can have them run whenever you want. You can have them run in the one of the, the parameters in here. You can actually just do that await right here if you want to do it really quick. You know, and the thing is, put that back to normal. You know, if you have a whole bunch of BG requests, you have a whole bunch of asynchronous tasks, and you only want one right now. Like, say you want, you know, the regular tech, the regular um, uh, text to be updating the UI, you know, uh, you know, right here, and you want uh, update one to update right here. You can do that with a regular with a regular async task. You need to time them, and you need to go in and out of the UI thread all the time to do this. I can um, I decide to make the text one work before the text one um and i can do that you know i can delay the action i don't have have it to have it run at the second i can have it run maybe um three or four lines down and not really time them with my code i can put them wherever i want i can make them look very good um, maybe it looks more interesting when they're text text one text two text three and maybe they don't run at the same time. I can do that with coroutines here. It's a lot easier that way. Now this is the introduction. There is a lot more with coroutines, but this is the pure basics that you started with, with coroutines. I recommend you know, looking at the encode documentation here. Uh, there's also the Kotlin uh, coroutines documentation. Um, yeah, kotlinlang.org there's also that a whole bunch of that um, i will put in a another another video soon about more in-depth routines but till then these are the the resources that i would recommend